everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Athena if you're new here and I make videos about outdoor adventures, hiking, camping and a little bit of home life as well. This is my partner Harvey. Hi. Who many of you will have met before, um, he's been in many of my videos, however we did realise that we've never really introduced him. Always lurking in the shadows. Yeah, um, he's a little bit of a man of mystery so far. So we asked my patrons for a few questions for Harvey and thought we'd sit down and do a Q&A while we are in lockdown, a little chance to reminisce on some past adventures and yeah, tell you a bit about our future plans as well. So yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> Let's get to know Harvey a little better. <laughs> <laughs> Morning pancakes. Nom nom nom. <laughs> so the first question we got, and this was definitely the most frequently asked question, and it is, what is your job? My job? Uh, so I am a professional tree surgeon. I have been for, God, maybe what, 15 years? I've kind of moved around all over the place with it. The reason I got into it was because it seems like a job that would give me freedom to move, um, which... I think I've definitely, I've used, <laughs> I've kind of worked, do a lot of work in Norway at the moment, uh, on and off, and um, I freelance to some companies in Sheffield, and then <clears throat> I've kind of worked in New Zealand for a long time, so uh, mainly sort of freelance tree climber, uh, so I get to spend my days swinging around, which sounds great, uh, it's hard work. Yeah, you know, as with any industry, it has its ups and downs. I've definitely found at times that I've wanted to go off and do other things. Uh, so I've done like a lot of festival work, building sets and carpentry. In Scotland, I was kind of building a fancy tree house. We'll put a photo up of the tree house. A anything and everything, as yeah, long as I get to kind of move of, around. You do a lot of things, but I think you're t it tends to be more like manual work that you do. Yeah. So we've recently been kind of setting up our online store and you've been doing a bit more computer work, which is what I always do. So it's kind of really funny to see you. Yeah, it's quite... But you're really good at it. Like you're, I mean, you're really good at kind of just picking up new things. New and, skills, yeah. yeah. You're a very curious person, so you're like, oh yeah, I want to try this, and I want to try that. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But but we kind of have a dream of like one day buying a property where we can have um, lots of space, and Harvey might have a workshop, and then you can like make things, because you're really into making stuff. Aren't yeah, you? yeah, exactly. Uh, I think, um, but because I've always moved, I've never really had the opportunity to kind of settle and build a workshop and all of these things which come with being grounded, mm -hmm. settled in one place, so uh, so yeah, we'll you know, watch this space. Almost at the summit, mm -hmm. Harvey's just wrapping up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hard going now. <laughs> so the next question was how did we meet and how long have we been together? I've answered this question before in a Q&A, um, so some of you will already know, but I thought it would be fun. How long have we been together? I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it would be fun to hear the story from Harvey's perspective. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was, so I was working in Scotland. Uh, while I was working up there, I was also training to do my mountain leader qualification. The Nevis Trust do uh, a bunch of free workshops, or they used to, I don't know what they're doing now, obviously with COVID, but uh, so I'd actually been up to do like a lichenology uh, workshop, which was amazing, really interesting with uh, with out on the, it was out near Strontian, so kind of heading out towards the Isle American Peninsula. And the next day, there's hardly anywhere to get breakfast in Fort William. Um, so, Weatherspoons it was, and I noticed this little blonde girl sat on the <laughs> side, and I was like, I'm going to sit right next to her. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just walked the West Highland Way, and I was therefore also up in Fort William, um, looking for somewhere to go for breakfast, and I was sat in Weatherspoons, waiting for my, my fry up, Yep. and in walks Harvey. <laughs> I was like, wow, she is beautiful. 
that. Oh, don't be silly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll I'm going to cut that bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the rest is history. And well, we got, was, yeah, we got chatting, didn't we? And then, yeah, and I was, um, was going to go out and walk. I can't remember where we walked. We Kinlock walked Horn. at Kin Kinlock Horn, yeah. Yeah, the plan was to do quite a big hike, but it's... The weather wasn't great, it's very overcast, so we kind of just ended up firing up onto one of the peaks. I can't remember which one it yeah, was. Yeah, it was like totally foggy, you couldn't see a thing, but it was really amazing and atmospheric. And I just remember like we talked the whole time and we had like really good conversations mm. and quite going straight in and quite like deep conversations. I remember some of the questions you asked me, I can't actually remember what they are now, but I remember you asking me questions that were quite like really made me think and um, mm. like really thoughtful questions and I was like oh this person's really interesting and yeah and um yeah it was and at the time he was living in Scotland and I was living in Manchester so I kind of went back and I don't know I had a, like you know when you just have like a feeling about someone so we just kind of we kept in contact and pretty much made a plan to see each other again almost straight away mm. yeah and then yeah, we just kind of committed to seeing each other. I would head up to Scotland, which was great. Like was every like once a month, twice a month, or something. Yeah, and you were doing a course in the lakes at the time, so I would go up there and meet him in the lakes, and yeah. and then he was in Wales at some. So we kind of like at the time we were both quite free, and we'd just meet up um, fairly I was regularly. Very nomadic, wasn't I, at that point? Yeah, and then you moved down to Exeter. And so you moved the other end of the country. It was first up in like near Glasgow, well, near Loch Lomond. And then four hours down. north and four hours south. Yeah, I prefer <laughs> driving north, I won't lie. Although I really like um, Dartmoor and I did a lot of exploring on Dartmoor when you were down there. But um, it's just nice to drive up north. But yeah, anyway, and then this is, the, this is our first, this is the first place that we have lived together, other than my mum's before this. Yeah, but this yeah. is like our first home together, I guess. So yeah. yeah. As long as I've got a view, I'm happy. Don't mind doing the washing up. So, uh, we never actually said how long we've been together. No. no. Do you know? That's <laughs> uh, about uh, coming up in the, uh, three years. Yeah, we've been together three years. It'll be four years in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's quite a long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, next question is from Sarah and she said that she notices you're good with wildflower. Could you share some knowledge and what are your favourite things to plant? Ooh. Uh, so we moved into this cottage and the gardens weren't overly, uh, you know, they're quite old, they hadn't been worked on a lot. Um, so they're kind of a bit of a a clean slate mm -hmm. so I just kind of cleaned them up and I just wanted to get some color in quickly because you know I didn't really know how long we were gonna stay here for so we firstly kind of went a bit nuts with just buying plants and potting them up this was in lockdown the first <laughs> lockdown in March yeah. was it yeah because you was it the first lockdown because you could still go to the garden center it was basically when whenever you could still go to the garden center in yeah. lockdown and we were going Oh, what's that? Bird? That's a woodpecker. Oh, it's a woodpecker. So firstly, we planted up loads of pots, and then secondly, with the I kind of like cleaned up the beds in the garden and <laughs> just got loads of wildflower seed down. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say I'm an expert. I suppose... You're just winging it. <laughs> it's kind of just winging it. And um, oh. there's definitely some things that I learnt. A, uh, it's really good to clear the ground as much as possible turn it over loads. I think one of the things I did wrong was not giving the meadow a haircut halfway through. So everything kind of got quite leggy. Yeah, it was and so went to long. Seed straight, straight, <laughs> straight away. So I think by, they call it the Chelsea chop. Our Monty calls it the Chelsea chop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did a few tests with other plants and cut them in half, uh, halfway through, let them reflower you just get a bit more longevity out of the wildflowers. But it was um, so beautiful and like the colour was amazing. Um, yeah, yeah it's my really favourite nice. part of garden. It's definitely it's one of the nice things about it and this is one of the great benefits of planting wildflower obviously is for the bees. And 
they were they were covered in bees. Mm. It was so nice. I think if I had the opportunity, like if we got land, mm -hmm. I would plant bulbs, huge huge swathes of bulbs. Uh, so daffodils, bluebells, um, crocuses, snowdrops. snowdrops. Um, Just like have a meadow covered in flowers, basically, yeah. it would be so nice. So the next question, we are moving more into adventure territory and it is, how did you get started with outdoor adventures? My parents are quite outdoorsy. My mum's a guide leader, uh, so I got like dragged on guide camps when I was really young, which was quite funny. And um, so I'd be like the only boy uh, <laughs> on these guide camps. Uh, but then we had some really good teachers when I was at school who would take us off on adventure weekends. I spent a lot of time growing up in the woods um, and my grandfather's and running around there. And then all from my, you know, when I was younger, I just spent all my time, I lived in the country, spent all my time outside, running around in the fields, playing manhunt and just climbing trees and checking out all of the derelict mills and just exploring. I think I've always been really curious about what's, what's around the next mm -hmm. corner. Um, and there's some really interesting woods where I grew up and that kind of got you know that it all sort of led into itself so as I got older um, I just you know wanted to go off and do some more kind of adventures mm -hmm. when I was 19 I went I did, I did go traveling and did kind of the circuit mm -hmm. um, so sort of uh, Fiji New Zealand Australia and then up through Asia Thailand what when did you do your Dartmoor thing oh yeah I can't remember you did a you did kind of an interesting yeah, I did. Dartmoor, didn't you? Like, yeah, I must have been like 25, 26 or something. And just sort of left Exeter, got a lift out to the Team Valley, and then just walked up the Team Valley out onto Dartmoor, and then spent about two weeks walking around Dartmoor on my own. Mm. And I, that was great. Yeah. Like, as the day I left, the weather turned, and I had sunshine. Just a quick ad break to tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, who is Squarespace. If you don't know, Squarespace is an amazing website building platform that has ready-made templates that you can customise to make an amazing professional looking website. One feature that I particularly like is the blog feature, which I use on my website. It is so easy to add photos, text, and even videos so I can keep you guys up to date on our outdoor adventures. And if you are interested in starting your own website or blog, do head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com forward slash Athena Mella for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The lights are getting really good again. Mm. So the next question is, what is your favourite adventure that you've had solo and that we've had together? And we're going to both answer this. I've done a few little things uh, by myself, which have been really good. Uh, like, I spent like, two, three days up on the Coolum Ridge, not doing the whole ridge in a one but one day do the north end, second day do the south end. Uh, and that was really good and sort of like soloed all the climbs. But I think like the big experience that I really kind of enjoyed on my own was uh, when I was living in New Zealand and working, I was living in Queenstown. I was kind of a bit sick of paying rent. I just moved up the mountain above work on my own and lived in the woods, made a little camp for about well, most of the summer, would wash in glacial melt rivers each day. It was kind of like 10 minutes down to, to work and then about 25 minutes back up on goat tracks. It was just one of those, just one of those amazing experiences. I just was sort of fully submersed in nature. Mm. Uh, every day I was working out in Speargrass Flats or out in the mountains or around Queenstown and then getting back finishing work, pick up some supplies in town and then straight up the mountain. Weekends I'd either stay up there or go off on adventures with friends. That was kind of, that's kind of like one of those really sort of 
kind of life life changing experiences in a way and it's made me really always want to live that way again I kind of love living in a cottage and you know in a house and it's very nice but you're a wild man I, I just love being completely submerged in nature mm, yeah yeah my favourite adventure, solo adventure, was also in New Zealand and it was when I cycle toured around New Zealand um, from north to south, or not quite all the way down south. Yeah, it was just an amazing experience of kind of just getting out there by myself and being totally self-reliant self -reliant and yeah. human-powered kind of adventure. It wasn't super like wild or anything, I was on a road bike and I was staying in campsites but it was just an amazing a time to kind of be experiencing all of the amazing landscapes of New Zealand and yeah, just kind of gaining a lot of confidence as well and trusting in myself and definitely a few times where it was really hard to make decisions based on kind of the weather and definitely feel quite vulnerable in situations but you learn so much from those kind of experiences so yeah I know quite a few of you have asked me to talk a bit more about that adventure um, so I might make a video on it at some point but um, yeah it was definitely I think New Zealand's like just so adventure ready yeah like I think you can yeah, you can have so many amazing experiences there. Mm. <laughs> we have kind of talked like you know it's one of those places that we've talked about maybe one day we we would want to move there and or well, at least definitely go back yeah right? oh I so want to go back and just go on a trip with you there yeah um going like a big road trip and I'd love to do some of the great walks as well um yeah I never did any when I was there no I didn't because I was cycling and you have to book them quite a lot in advance because I was cycling I just couldn't didn't know where I was going to be at mm. any time so um I think yeah, I just I didn't that. really want to do them when I was there because uh, you know obviously you sort of see how busy Queenstown is and there's so much amazing backcountry around. Moving on to adventures that we've had together, what was your favourite? Our last Scottish trip was really good. What was, was that? Oh, the Alps yeah. Hebrides. Yeah, that was yeah. really nice. Um, Alps. A yeah. Well. Yeah, I was saying the Alps. The Alps was my favourite, I think, like, just kind of learning alpinism together and working together and having to kind of move together in the mountains was really fun, kind of doing that together and mm. bivying out and... Just, um, yeah, just sort of being a team and having yeah. to rely on each other. Yeah, I think it was, a, it was really amazing to see how we can work together and I'm definitely less experienced than Harvey in the mountains um, and... I'm definitely more afraid as well, but you're so patient and I think we work really well together and it was kind of learning our boundaries as well. As an example, there was one day where I just got really scared by something that happened and that kind of, something kind of then switched in my head and I was just scared for the whole rest of the day. Even though it wasn't scary, it was just like, the initial thing that happened made me afraid. It was just basically like, there was a big, I don't really know, there was like a big drop and... Was it on the, um, when it was, uh, we were going along that ridge and then they sort of went round yeah, the corner Yeah, and, and it was, was literally, really it, it was super exposed and I think that moment just made me really afraid and we were kind of up there by ourselves at sunset and so then we kind of had to make the decision whether or not we wanted to carry on because you really wanted to go up to like a summit mm. and I was like, I'm just, I'm just like, quite on edge and I just don't think I can do it and we kind of had to make that decision together. Totally, and, but... But you're so like understanding I think of when yeah. I'm like, no I don't want to, I don't want to do this. I or... think the, uh, you know, I mean obviously, you know, it's good to push your boundaries and do all these things but I think one of, one of the things you have to be, especially as being the sort of slightly more experienced person, I'm, you know, I'm not hugely experienced but, um, it's still got to be fun, mm -hmm. and actually, you know, we're together, we're a team, and if I'm just bullishly dragging you yeah. <laughs> up the it mountain, just I just and when you're do really it unhappy, yeah. it's, it's all it's going to turn into is a negative experience for yeah. you, yeah, and yeah. the whole idea of being there is to have a positive, fun time, Yeah, and I, I think that's the key, isn't it? And that was my first year of doing alpine climbing. 
and I'd only just started climbing as well so I'd only been climbing like less than a year and then we were going straight into like alpine climbing which is intense yeah. and um you did great but the next year yeah we went back and I was really excited to go back and I did an alpine uh, skills course so that um I think really helped my confidence kind of having those skills so I think I don't know I guess it's just an example of how we kind of work together really well and it didn't put me off it just made me want to get better and do it even more yeah. so but also fingers crossed yeah we can go back. <laughs> please let us back in France but something else we were just um chatting about earlier was another like adventure I guess that we've had together that we both really enjoyed isn't really an adventure it's just an experience of Harvey's friend used to have a cabin in the woods and we would go up there um, in down in Devon and we would stay in the cabin and go out surfing and climbing on the sea cliffs and then kind of head back to the cabin and cook really good food and we'd just be out in nature and there was no phone service and it was just such a beautiful place of like yeah. bird song and it's just so secluded and just, just amazing. Getting back, getting back to nature. Yeah. Again it's that kind of like for me it was always going back to that place that I found in New Zealand. Um, where you just feel completely submerged in, mm -hmm. in nature. Yeah, and I think having that experience quite early on in our relationship, like we'd maybe been together, uh, I don't know, when we first went there, but maybe like four, five months or so when we first went there, kind of having that, that experience of being out in the woods in this cabin together um, and both loving that experience of being off grid, I think kind of shaped our relationship and, and what mm. we want out of life and yeah, yeah, totally. um, not just kind of I guess not just adventures but also just like simplicity in nature and just being there together in nature um yeah. getting a bit hippy dippy now but <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think that's let it let it out let yeah. it flow just <laughs> yeah but yeah I think like that's what that's kind of life we want isn't it so yeah I reckon yeah definitely yeah so we'll just keep it small. Next question. Where is your favourite place to camp? Um, in the van and in the tent. We'll both answer it again. Well, I mean, if I'm out camping, uh, then I'm going to look for some of water and maybe a bit of shelter. So woods, you know. If, you like, I, yeah, you love the woods, don't you? I love camping in the woods, yeah. it's Because uh, also, uh, depending on where you are, what you're doing, you know, you can have a small fire. Um, so there's warmth there's water, there's, you don't have to use as much fuel because you can cook on the fire. Um, and I think just for, you know, the ambience mm -hmm. of actually just being able to sit by the fire is great. But of course you need to be careful. It's, it's always funny when we're, when we're deciding where we want to camp, if we're going on a wild camp or whatever, I always want to camp on a hill I always want to be <laughs> yeah. in the hills and I want to like open my tent and have these amazing views and just kind of be up high and like I really love that and you're always like oh I want to go down to the woods and I'm like but what about like the views and Got so it's view, kind yeah. of funny. We can walk up to the top of the hill and get the view. Yeah, yeah but it's kind of fun. it's good though because <laughs> I think I've come to love um, woodlands more from being with you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and then in the van I suppose just, oh, you know, I mean it's wherever you can if you yeah if you can get a good spot with with a view so you can open the back doors uh, and live the dream the places that you just find randomly are always the best mm -hmm. there were some really great places on Lewis and Harris wasn't there mm -hmm. the next question is from Paul and he asked why I started making YouTube videos and we thought we'd add in a bit of what does Harvey think about the fact that I started making YouTube videos. <laughs> so um, the first video I made was of a wild camp in Wales and I honestly can't really remember the thought process behind it but it was I think it was just kind of like oh I've always watched YouTube and I really enjoy watching other people on YouTube and watching adventures or just the way people live their day-to-day -day life. So I think it always been in the back of my mind that I thought oh maybe I'll kind of make my own videos and I was just going off to do a solo wild camp and I think I was a little bit nervous. I think I often get nervous when I'm going to do a solo. So I thought that filming it might be a nice kind of distraction, give me something to focus on. I don't know, I love creating and I've, I've always loved photography and writing. So video was kind of a new thing that I was 
getting into a little bit and um, just made that video. People seem to really like it. And it just kind of went from there, I guess, because I got such a good reaction to that first video I made. I was like, okay, maybe I'll just keep making videos. And now I have like a, a timeline, timeline of adventures that we've had from the past two years, which is so mm. nice to look back on. Here he comes. Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> he felt like he was missing out. Hi. Are you coming up? <laughs> Do you want to come up? Up, up, up. Come on then. Up, up. Come on then. Uh, yes, we know who's the real star around here. Come on. Come on. What did you think when I first made that video? I think you said to it like a duck to water. I think it's like, it's really obvious that it was just a great avenue for you to explore. And I think the thing I really like about making video is that I can show my personality a lot more, which is kind of scary because it's like, oh, what if people don't like? me but also you can just I think as opposed to in photography and on Instagram I think on YouTube you can actually get to know who I am and mm. I can talk about things much more and um, I think then you create a more of a connection with your audience and it's really nice and I think like I, I have a real community on here so yeah it's been kind of amazing like watching it grow over the last i still feel like i'm very new to the youtube thing even though i've been doing it for two years now um but for some reason i still feel like i've just only just started i don't know We're why just tiny little potatoes <laughs> um, <laughs> you can cut that out yeah um but the next question is kind of i thought would lead in nicely and it was from steph and she said I'd love to know your thoughts on balancing slash prioritising the experience versus documenting the experience. E.g. just enjoying going for a hike versus taking videos and then editing later. It all depends on the energy that you've got because I find sometimes when, if I've had a heavy week at work, come Saturday, Sunday, I'm tired but we want to go out and we want to film, we mm -hmm. still want to go off and do adventures. Um, but then it's like, how much energy do you have to put into the creative side of it? And also actually going out and doing the things that you want to do. Sometimes you wish you had more energy and more time to really focus on it. Mm -hmm. My thoughts to it are a little bit different, I guess, in that um, you have a very physically demanding job. So you kind of, you do, you are more energy drained on the weekends and in the evenings and stuff. Mm. Whereas I am sat on a computer for my, what was my full-time job, I'm now part-time doing it. I was a, I am a communications manager. And that is a lot of, you know, computer time and it's not particularly creative. So I have a lot of creative energy that I want to use and get out. I'm just a creative person. I mean, we both are. Yeah. So I've all, I just find so much joy in creating and capturing moments and I always have done and I can't not do it. So I actually have trouble sometimes with, we'll go out on a walk and we won't be filming and I'll be like, damn it, like it's amazing sunset and I didn't <laughs> yeah. bring my camera and it's just like, yeah. I just so always- The light's really good. Yeah, oh, yeah. I wish I had. Yeah. <laughs> I just like always want to create and document. Yeah. However, I am at this, period now where I'm tr transitioning between doing YouTube and making videos for pure passion to also doing it for work because I am also making a income from it now which is interesting because it's still a pure passion but there is definitely a little bit of oh, I really should make a YouTube video and we're doing this cool thing oh, I really should film especially during the last year where it's been a little bit more difficult with lockdowns and um, we haven't been able to get out as much. Whenever we do go out, I'm like, oh, I really should film this because we're going to do this cool thing and we haven't been able to do very much. But saying that, I haven't really had a time where I felt like filming has really got in, in the way of an adventure yet. Like a good example is when we went to Scotland on our road trip in summer. And for me, it was just a pure joy to create those videos. And I don't feel like it got in the way of our trip. For me, it often enhances the experience. Like, I just really want to film things, and I love looking back on them. And like I said, we have I think like we had a lot of we had a lot of fun filming. Yeah. It's just like so nice to be somewhere new, mm -hmm. and just to be 
documenting it, making the most of our time there, mm -hmm. and yeah, it was it was really good. Yeah, I really and enjoyed it. that was kind of the first time that we've, um, well, not the first time, but we were really working together on the video. So you were yeah. doing all the drone stuff, and obviously I need him to, I want him to film clips of me doing things, and I film him. And... B-roll boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like it was a really good collaborative trip, and it still felt like a holiday. It didn't feel like we were going yeah. for work or anything. It was just like, it was just a joy to create those videos, I think. Yeah, it was, so, really, it was, it was nice. Yeah. Um, but we really want to, we're, we're so excited, and this kind of leads into the final question. Um, what post-lockdown post, down, post lockdown adventure are you most looking forward to? But I'll just say, like, I'm so excited to keep making videos. So, uh, some long distance hikes. Yeah. Cape Raft Trail, Sky Trail. Mm -hmm. This uh, is just stuff that we really want to do, whether or not we can. I would really like to do, I think it's the Great North Trail. It starts in the Peak District and finishes at Cape Raft. I think it's like 800 miles, 18 or odd days, probably more like 24 or so. Is that is this the cycling one? Yeah. yeah. We were saying, you know, we both actually really want to do some solo adventures as well. Mm. Um, I think that's a healthy thing in a relationship is that he wants to go and do some cycling things and I'd really like to go and do some um, hikes, um, long distance hikes by myself to kind of build up my confidence in that a little bit. Just from having spent the last year of being relatively inside my comfort zone, I feel like I <laughs> would quite like to push myself a little bit. Um, well, it's funny that. how these how these questions actually, you know, you lot asking us, it kind of made me really think about it. So it's mm -hmm. like, oh wow, actually, you know, it has been a long time since I, I went off and did a purely solo adventure that was more than maybe two, three days. Mm -hmm. And, you don't want you to leave me for that one. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, don't go. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, I need to get out of here. <laughs> so I think we've got, like, you know, in the pipeline, hopefully post lockdown, we've definitely got lots of adventures we want to do together um, and with Oslo and take him on some long distance mm, hikes. Yeah. Um, he's sat over there. And stuff that we want to do solo as well. So I'm really excited to like keep documenting everything. I hope that you enjoyed this little Q and A. Get get to know Harvey a bit more. We'll see you guys in a new vlog soon. I'm still getting on with the moving process. Hopefully. And thank you so much for watching. And yep. do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe. And see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Cheers.